Hello and welcome to this maths tutorial video. In this video we're going to be looking at the laws of indices. So let's make a start and see what we're going to be considering. So on this video uh, we're going to think about what indices are. So before we get uh, too much into the material let's just make sure we know what we're talking about. So if we write something that looks like this, if we write x squared like that, uh, hopefully we're all familiar with that and we know what that means. So this number up here, this 2 that is uh, in the superscript or raised up here, that is uh, an index or an exponent or a power uh, and where we have lots of these we refer to them as indices so that's what we're talking about. Now hopefully we all know that x squared is a short way of writing x times x like that which is really handy. Uh, we can write this out in other ways as well. We can write x cubed like that, which obviously means x times x times x. So as you can see that this number is basically saying how many times are we taking this number or this letter here and how many times are we multiplying it by itself. Once we go above uh, x to the power of 3, we get x to the power of 4 or sometimes uh, when we're talking quickly we'll just say x to the 4. Uh, what that means is x times x times x times x. So as you can see, all we're doing is just looking at this and thinking uh, how many times are we multiplying x by itself? So we're multiplying x by itself once, twice, three, four times, x to the four. So this is all well and good. This is a nice handy way of writing long strings of multiplication uh, of the same number. Uh, very much like multiplication is a way of writing long strings of addition. Uh, it's just a condensed form of writing this. However, these indices have innumerable uses in engineering. They're extremely useful uh, and they leave us with some very interesting ways that they behave with each other. So if we start looking at combining different powers. So let's uh, have a look at this. If we say uh, x uh, to the 3 times by x to the 4, what will this become? How can we simplify this? Well if we look at this logically and think about what these individual parts mean, x uh, to the 3 or x cubed means x times x times x and then this bit here, x to the 4, means we're taking that and we're multiplying it by x times x times x times x which as you can see we've now taken x and we've multiplied it by itself one two three four five six seven times so just as this can be written out like this so we can then take this long string of multiplication and write it out like this x to the power of 7, like that, x to the power of 7, because we're taking x and multiplying it by itself 7 times. Now if we look back at our original expression here, x cubed times x to the 4, you can see a very clear relationship between these numbers and this number. You can see that we could rewrite this as x to the power of 3 plus 4 x to the power of 3 plus 4. So you can see there that that then will become x to the power of 7. So you can see the relationship between these numbers and this number. We're simply adding them together. So that helps us to understand our first uh, rule of indices is that if we take x to any power m and we times it by x to any power n then we can simply rewrite that as x to the power of m plus n. So that is our first law of indices, x to the power of m plus n. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll just take that and we'll pop it up here so that we've got a reference to, to go back to. We've got x to the m times x to the n is equal to x to the m plus n. So let's get rid of all of this and then we'll have a look at our second rule. So now we come to our second rule of indices. What we're going to consider now is what happens if we take something that looks like this. If instead of multiplying we say x to the fifth divided by x to the third. What will that become? So again what we need to think about now is how are we going to treat this? Well if we think back to pretty basic algebra 
Let's lay this out in a different way. x to the fifth means x times x times x times x times x divided by x times x times x. Now you probably remember from basic algebra that if you multiply by a value and then divide by that same value, you can cancel it out. It's as if that operation didn't exist, as if it never happened. So what we can do now is we can look at this and we can say, right, so we can uh, remove this x and this x. We can remove this one and this one. And we can remove this one and this one. And then all we're actually left with is this top row here. Everything below uh, the top row on the bottom here is gone. And all we're left with is just an x multiplied by an x. So what that then becomes is x squared. So you can see here now the relationship between this x to the fifth divided by x to the third simply becomes x squared or x to the two. So looking at this we've got a 5 and a 3 and a 2. We can very clearly see the relationship between those which leads us to the conclusion that x to the fifth divided by x to the third is equal to x to the fifth minus uh, the third. So x to the 5 minus 3. And that will then become x 5 minus 3 is 2. So you can see there that now we've got our second rule x to the 5 minus 3 becomes x squared. So what we can say very generally now is that x to the m divided by divided by x to the n is equal to the x to the m minus n. Okay, so we've got x to the m divided by x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n. That is our second rule. Just make that look a bit more like a plus there. Jolly good. So that is our second rule of indices. So let's have a look now at our third rule. So our third rule of indices now uh, will help us to answer this question. What if we have something that looks like this? What if we have x cubed to the power of 2, like that written in brackets? Well, again, let's just have a look and a think about what this actually means. So what we've got here is x times x times x. That is what x cubed means. So within those brackets, we've got x times x times x. And then on the outside of the brackets, we're taking this and we're multiplying this whole thing by itself. So that means that we're doing that whole thing multiplied by x times x times x, which will look like that. So now you can see again we've just got a big long string of multiplication. So that's going to turn into x times x times x times x times x times x. Just a big old long string of multiplication. And if we look here we can see that we're taking x and we're timesing it by itself. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Which leaves us with x to the power of six. So once again, if we look at our original formula and look at what we've ended up with, we've got x to the power of 3 raised to the power of 2 becomes x to the power of 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So we can say that x to the power of 3 to the power of 2 can be re re rewritten as x to the 3 times 2, which will then become x to the 6. So there we've got our lead into our third rule of indices, which is that x to the th m raised to the power of n will become x to the m times n, like that, or x to the mn. And that is what our third rule of indices looks like. So we can see we've got our three rules, three basic rules. These cause certain things to behave in certain interesting ways, which we'll look at in the next video. But for the time being, these are our three laws of indices. x to the m times x to the n is equal to the x is equal to x to the m plus n. x to the m divided by x to the n is equal to x to the m minus n. And x to the m to the n is equal to x to the m times n. And that is how we do our three laws of indices. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.